Uh, <laughs> it's uh, Mickey Keating. I mean, the, the, the type of movie, the genre. Not, not the wonderful twists and creative turns that you all have come up with. I'm not uh, suggesting that. Uh, Mickey uh, Keating is the director. He's here. Uh, the star of the movie, Ashley Bell, from uh, The Last Exorcism. He's well known for that. And Pat Healy, who's been in just about everything. Everything. Yeah. I was in Gone with the Wind. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, I just looked you up, and it's like... You're been no. uh, yeah, and you're all. Do you produce on this movie as well? Yeah, well, yeah. I'm technically an executive producer, more of an advisory situation position. Yeah. Um, and now uh, let's let's uh, start with uh, Mickey. You you like directing horror films? I love it. Yeah, love them. And now, do you do you consider them genre films or? My films in particular, you know, I think it's it, there. I consider them love letters to a lot of movies that inspire me. Some are genres, some aren't. You know, this movie is just as much, in my opinion, Sam Peckinpah's The Getaway as it is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and you know, I think it's it's really nice to be able to link that all together and really make something, hopefully, different. Uh, you uh, give us a little a little bit of an idea of the story of the movie. Sure, it's in in Peckinpah style fashion. It's about uh, a couple of crooks who botch a bank robbery and take a hostage and drive deep into the desert where they stumble upon a maniac with a sniper rifle who, you know, has been living in the memory of the Vietnam War for I don't remember that Peck and Paw movie. I don't <laughs> no, that. no. It wouldn't have been the Vietnam War. It would have been. Well, no, but it's the same kind of idea of, well, it's like, you mentioned also Psycho. It's, you said you always wanted Janet Lee to get away with you know, take the money and get away. Sure, yeah. I would have seen that movie. Yeah, even if Norman Bates didn't show up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so and so, who plays the uh, old sniper guy there? Hello, Pat Healy. Oh, Pat. Really? It takes place in 1978. He didn't mention that. So, oh, uh, the movie oh, takes place. I am a Vietnam vet of recent. Uh, yeah. Discharge. Yeah. yeah, he's not like, a, you know, in a wheelchair and 80 years old. <laughs> it didn't right? go well for me yeah. over there. So. And, and so, do you? Did you call? Do you, do you call the place Carnage Park? Uh, yeah, yeah I came up with it myself. I patented it. <laughs> I mean, that's your character. Does he call yes. it Carnage? He calls well, it Carnage Park. I don't think I ever say it. No? There's a sign. It <laughs> says Carnage Park? Sure. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just wonderful to think. It's kind of like, uh, well, it's wonderful to think that this could exist in a way, isn't it? Totally. I mean, you know, you drive in between anywhere between L.A. and Vegas, and you can wander off. A number of places and get lost and probably find not one but four snipers out there. So <laughs> this uh, is just one of them. It's another roadside attraction. Totally. Uh, Ashley, t tell us who yes. you play in Carnage Park. Uh, I play Vivian Fontaine, who ends up at the wrong place in the wrong time and refuses to be a victim in this uh, death death maze. So how does it, who do the so the two uh, uh, fleeing bank robbers? How do you get mixed up with them, or how do you get mixed up with Carnage Park? Um, well, it's, uh, that day is the day where I've decided to go to the bank to take out a loan to save my oh. family's farm, and I've gotcha. summoned up my courage. I think it's my, I'm wearing the one to dress this character save has the owned. family farm, I Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put it on the line, mm -hmm. and then... I get taken hostage and then uh, thrown into um, a bad thrown into the fire. A bad yeah. situation. Yeah. And you you work with an actor. We look you know we look we go Larry Fessenden. Oh he, my God, he's great. Who, so so tell us a little bit about Larry, if you would. Larry Fessenden is the king of independent horror film. You know, film. He was my mentor. I interned for him. You know, he's responsible for so many significant filmmakers' careers like Ty West, Jim Mickle. Uh, you know Adam Wingard and he you know is just a great guy who's really supportive and showed me how to make movies and showed me that you know horror films don't necessarily have to be just about the blood and violence and nudity like they can be something different they can be a personal expression they can have artistic value and I think he's a really important he's I consider him like the John Cassavetes of like <laughs> indie horror and, and, I like that but is there blood violence and uh, nudity in this movie Oh, yes. Okay, okay. good. <laughs> okay, good. I just wanted to make sure. I, I'm full frontal. I don't know if that yeah. gets you excited oh, or not. But, wow. uh, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, I don't want to disappoint Less anyone. Less nudity than, than there is. I, I've us. already seen a, a Sundance film with full frontal male nudity I've seen this eight. Hey, well, you got your business. There's a whole yeah, section. I don't know how we got in without full frontal There's male nudity. There's a whole nudity, section of it over there. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's called Carnage Park. Um, now, I saw a little bit of a trailer, which uh, looked really good, uh, and, and I liked it because it was 
and I mean this in the best way, it's kind of slow. You know what I mean? You know the trailer where she's walking up sure, yeah. to the thing? Yeah. And it's very slow, and I, di- and, and I just go, what's going on? It, it, you, you get filled with that sense of dread immediately. Well, totally. And I think, first and foremost, this movie is, above all else, a character piece. And, you know, it, we view the world through the eyes of Vivian. And, you know, I think a lot of times when you're wandering through any sort of area it takes time it takes moments to build up you don't necessarily always find the piece to the puzzle and you can play with a lot of tension from that aspect and i think that a lot of horror films nowadays take two they just immediately give everyone the answers tell them it's okay rush to the scares and that's not interesting to me and that's not very uh something i want to do you want the slow build uh and uh, it's uh, yeah you're gonna oh, say yeah something? well i wanted to say you you mentioned also um having this this incident probably possibly happening in in real life or pulling from actual events and you know you can see in the news so many horrifying incidents that are just kind of a uh, unfortunately a familiar vocabulary with the state of the news and the state of the world right now but i think what was fascinating about mickey's script and mickey's directing is this so transcends and breaks the mold of 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 a horror film and of a quote unquote genre mm. film because He's not making invincible characters. All of the people in his film are real, beautiful characters struggling to survive or struggling with something internal or an expression or something like that. And that, that's what was so exciting to play as an actor. And I think also just exciting having, having seen it is you're seeing them at a crux well, see, and that was, how are they going to make it? That was going to be my question for you. Your character... It's not like a, an Ellen Ripley, an alien, who always kind of had that badass in her. Does she... Right. She's never really had it in her life, but suddenly no. channels there to save the family farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we had a couple conversations about, you know, I, I did come into that, the bank, with a little bit more spit and vinegar than I would probably have any other day. And, you know, uh, I think that's probably the one dress this character does own. You know, she has to work on a farm, and she's tough enough to have a little savvy in this environment, but she's put through the ringer, and the violence that does erupt that my, my character has to do and is also forced upon my character is real and scary because the situations are real and scary, and, and, and that's when things get messy, and that's when things get truly frightening, and that's where the scares come from. When, so when, when, the chari- when you believe the characters as people, I then I think it's, it really is more... I, I look at it oftentimes as pathetic. It seems the things that happen to them are pathetic. It's just it just rends your heart, you know, as yeah. well as scares the hell out of you. And do you try to make the bad guys like the? They end up being, you end up probably kind of rooting for them, right. the two bank robbers. You try to make them as real as possible. Uh, like, sure. I mean, I think the intention is to never have a real throwaway character in any movie that I make. And I and you know, if in, even if you don't agree with what they do or what they say, the fact of the matter, Paul Schrader said it the best, you don't have to have a likable character as long as you have an interesting character. And that's very, very important to me. And let me just say, sir, thank you for your service. I'm sorry things went wrong for you. Yeah, well, you know, we all have to do what we have to do, you know, in that situation, you never know what you really will do. But Does his uh, backstory come out even? Um, you know, we, we talked and we have a great big backstory that we built, but you know, you without giving too much of like the horror film exposition moments, I think it's it's important for audiences to be able to leave the theater and be like connecting the dots themselves. Now they've seen it here already, right? You've had, you've you had a screening for Tuesday night, tomorrow night. Oh, not, not until oh, tomorrow okay. night. Not yeah. until tomorrow night. Best of luck, Carnage Park. The director Mickey Keating, Ashley Bell, and Pat Healy, and Alan Ruck is also in it. Who people? Yes, he's wonderful. In yeah, it too. people, you yeah. see him, you'll know him, and and Larry Fessenden, and and everybody. So good luck with it. I hope it's great. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank uh-huh. you.